Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Faith and Friends alongside Cheyenne the Wonder Horse and our antique desk. Oh, I got introduced. Cheyenne the Wonder Horse was introduced before me. Well, she's the star of the show. She's a wonder horse. We're going to introduce you Jennifer's to Jennifer's getting us some carrots to feed the horse, I believe. I look forward to doing that later Me too. On. Yeah. Mark and Jennifer are not here, obviously, and so it is now our show for the day. We're not really. Over. Mark and Jennifer are out in the field. They've got a few interviews, and they will be back here shortly. But for now, Andy and I are carrying the load. <laughs> <laughs> We're arguing over who gets to ride the horse first. I would like to. <laughs> But we are concerned that, that might break the horse, and it, of course, is an auction item. Mm -hmm. We'll have more about our auction coming up soon. It's a great day here on Faith and Friends. We're so glad you could be with us. A 10-day citywide Big Tent Revival is about to begin. Find out where and how you can be a part of it. And have you been suffering from an ongoing case of the sniffles? Well, Dr. Trudy Peeper talks about how peppercorns just might be your remedy in our health segment. And there's a brand new Christian radio station in town but first, we'll move to our scripture of the day. Andy? Speaking of radio stations, today's scripture verse talks about the ears and hearing. Listen closely, will you? It's Matthew 13, 12 through 15. For whoever has to him will be given more, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Very interesting set of passages there, Zach can become a tongue twister, and so maybe you find yourself wandering and saying, what, what, am I hearing? Am I not hearing? Am I seeing? You know, what's going on here? But it's so true. Our hearts, when we turn away from God, even for a moment, the eyes become blind, and even though we're seeing, we're not seeing. Even though our ears are open, we're not hearing. It's so important to listen to what God has for us. That's right. It just really reminds me. It comes back to the heart. Mm. No matter what, you can see throughout Jesus' ministry that the, the people wanted to see and they wanted to hear, but it was the people whose heart was correct, the heart who believed in Jesus. They were the ones who truly understood, not through their senses or their ears or their hearing or whatever it may be, but it is through the heart. And of course, our eyes in Scripture, it says, show, show the hearts. You, know, hmm. you can see through the eyes that part of it. Well, what we put in our minds through our ears does matter. And the Lima region has a new faith-based quality option and a brand new radio station. Jennifer talks with pa Pastor Mike Spaulding of Calvary Chapel here in Lima about the brand new WTTP FM 101.1. Thanks, guys. Well, I am literally standing in the middle of what is going to become the radio station of Calvary Chapel of Lima here on Granite Avenue in Lima. Pastor Mike Spaulding is here. What an exciting thing that is happening for Lima, a brand new Christian radio station coming right here. Yes, a brand new station, and it's going to be unlike anything that Lima has ever seen before. We've got plenty of music stations, Christian music stations, nothing wrong with that. Our focus is going to be on 24-7, 365 Bible teaching. And when I say 24-7, I mean 24-7. There won't be any music. Well, no, no, just since I say that, let me pull that back. We will have a, a two-hour segment on Sundays right after the church hour. Folks are getting out of church. Andy Chrisman has a, a worship program. Andy, of course, was with For Him. He has a, a two-hour worship program where he interviews uh, worship artists and worship pastors. And so we will carry that. So we will have some music, but that's going to be it. The rest of it will be Bible teaching. Bible teaching. Give me an idea of what type of Bible teachers or maybe even some names of the Bible teachers that you're going to have on your agenda. Sure. Uh, well, we will have a few nationally recognized, uh, such as Alistair Begg, uh, Truth for Life. We'll have uh, John MacArthur on the weekends. We'll have uh, Chuck Swindoll Monday through Friday. And, uh, and then 
some prominent Calvary Chapel pastors. Some folks will recognize the names. Uh, Greg Laurie, for instance, uh, we'll have him uh, Monday through Friday. And a guy by the name of Mike Spalding, he'll be on there <laughs> Monday through Fridays. Uh, local pastors, we're going to have uh, Doug Boquist from uh, Lima Community will be on. Uh, John Hayward will be on our station. And we've invited a couple of other local pastors and to, to be on. So they're in the process of working that out, all the details of, of getting their uh, sermons ready to go. So we're pretty excited about that focus on Lima. Now, you are no stranger to radio. You've had a radio program going in several on several radio stations for quite some time. But now to have your very own radio station here at your church, how did that come about? This uh, really was the culmination of a, a vision that uh, I had about 15 years ago. Just praying, Lord, how can we reach more people uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Uh, churches only hold so many. Some folks are never going to come to your church. So how can we reach those folks? And uh, through that season of prayer, the Lord impressed upon me radio, radio. And so over the years, we've prayed about that. But the FCC, they're really restrictive on, on when they open up application windows for uh, entities such as ourselves. And, and according to the FCC, we're an educational institution. Mm -hmm. So... But they open up those windows very seldom. So when they opened it up this last time, we jumped at the opportunity, filed an application with the FCC, and here's how God works. We filed, and 30 days to the day later, we were approved for that application. And the website's already going. Where can people go to find out, um, to, to go ahead and stream and also see your programming schedule? Yes, they can go to uh, www.wttpfm.com. WTTPFM.com. WTTP, we chose that uh, call letter uh, sequence intentionally. That is witnessing the transforming power. WTTPFM.com. You can go to that now. You can start streaming 101.1 on your computer and very soon from the radio. We're excited to see what God has planned right here at Calvary uh, Chapel of Lima. Pastor Mike Spaulding, we're so thankful for your willingness to pray for 15 years and be willing to wait. And we're excited to see what God has planned through this radio station. Back to you. Mike Spaulding's well, a great guy. I just enjoy Mike. He got he to is. share at his church a few, a few months ago, but that's neat, exciting. Neat thing it's happening, it's going to you know. be certainly a blessing for the Lima area. Yep. You know, it's beginning to look a lot like the Christmas. auction. Well, almost, but the auction here at TV44. And we have already been carrying in multiple items, which is what we have on set here. You, we introduced you to Cheyenne the Wonder Horse. There's something, a magical treasure <laughs> in that desk. We want to tell you about this is a 55-year-old school desk. And we discovered while bringing it on set here, it does have something. What you could that, that be? inside so we are going to unveil that at huh. the end of the show we don't know it could be gold andy said it could be doubloons i think it is doubloons we'll have to define those specifically later but multitude of things but it is auction season yes. we are just incredibly thankful for the response from you some more interesting pieces that have arrived lots from the hollow log the rocking horse is from there and the desk and also we have 45 dollars in food coupons from taco bell and zach is holding Something that all Buckeye fans might like to put in their front That's yard. That's right, hollow log item here. Very generously, not just this, but multiple items donated. We are happily accepting auction items starting now and throughout all the summer. Stop by Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and mark your calendars now for the 2014 TV44 auction, which is Saturday, September 6th, right here at TV44. Still looking for that giant cake as well. So maybe <laughs> six foot eight cake for me to dive into. Well, depending on where you grew up, you might remember good old-fashioned tent meetings. A local church is reviving that tradition with the hopes of reviving the city of Lima at the same time. Mark is with Pastor William Turner of Open Door Baptist Church. We're at Open Door Church here in Lima, joined now by Pastor William Turner, and you've got an exciting event coming up in just a few weeks. Yes, we have a 10-day tent revival starting June 20th through 29th. Uh, two services a day, one at 1030 and the other at 7, and we'd like to invite everybody in the Lima area to come on out and join us. And you guys are no strangers to the, the tent revivals. This is what, the second in three years? The, the second one we've had. The first time was a, a major success. The Lord really come down and blessed and had a great one, so uh, we're going to do it again this year. 
you know, we get a lot of prayers into our prayer line at the church and a lot of folks asking for revival for our country, revival in our city. And certainly that is something that you're taking to your heart here at uh, Open Door Church. Yeah, we really strive and pray. Um, the folks here at the church have done an excellent job. They, we have different members been praying and fasting for 50 days. So we're hoping the Lord will come down and do something special again. 20 services. You're not preaching all 20 of them, though. You've got a great group of speakers lined up. Yes, we have speakers from all over the country coming in, and uh, it's going to be a great service. Some of the men of the church will preach, and some of the uh, pastors from all over western Ohio will be preaching also. What, uh, what are you guys trying to accomplish with this? We're just trying to uh, do the Lord's work in a, in a great way, going back, throwing back uh, Billy Sunday, the great evangelist of yesteryear, was in Lima in 1911, and he put up a tabernacle on South Pier Street. So just trying to uh, walk on the old paths, just show people what, uh, what, how it used to be. What can people expect who, who come to the revival? Uh, old-fashioned preaching, old-fashioned singing, uh, hymns, uh, good spirit where everyone's welcome. And uh, again, the, the dates and the times? Uh, it'll be June 20th through 29th, uh, services in the mornings at 1030 and then the evening at, at 7 o'clock. And, and there is literally going to be a big tent over on the other side of the church, right? Yeah, on the other side of the building we have a huge tent that will seat 300 and we can fit more in there if we need to. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Pastor William Turner. That is the Open Door Church, the revival coming up at the end of this month. For more information, check out our website, WTLW.com. Well, prayer is an important element here at TV44. In fact, it was prayer that first launched the idea of TV44 more than 30 years ago, and it continues to guide us today. Recently finished the Spring to Life campaign, and now heading into the summer, Jennifer is back in the studio with station manager Kevin Bowers. Thank you, Zach. Lots of exciting things always taking place here at TV44, and we're going to spend a couple of moments talking with Kevin Bowers about some of the latest things that are taking place here. And we're going to start with some viewer mail. We get a lot of viewer mail, which I appreciate hearing from our viewers. Recently, uh, we wrote, uh, recently a viewer named Kathy wrote in and said, we received a letter from Time Warner Cable about changes in viewing TV44. I can't recall what the letter said the changes would start, but this change concerns me. Do you have any more information? Well, what more information can we share with Kathy? Yes, there's... in fact, Kathy emailed us that question, and she really reflects a large body of people who are Time Warner subscribers, and that's happening this week. So if you're not receiving 44 on the standard Channel 4 that you've always seen us on, uh, really you have to ask a couple of questions. One, do you have a digital box? If you do, you'll still be able to receive us, but it's going to be on a different channel. And then secondly, if you don't, do you have a QAM tuner in your mm -hmm. television? and that enables you to receive our signal another way. But if you have an old set, say it's 10 years old, if it's an analog set, then you're gonna to have to call Time Warner and get some special adapter equipment to actually receive us. So that's, that's, that's happening now. I mean, that could be a, quite of a change. You wake up one day and you can't watch our station. I'd be pretty sad. Disconcerting, yes. <laughs> so really, if you have any questions, the easiest thing to do is go to Time Warner's Elida Road uh, office, or if you're in Walpock, go to Walpock office, Finley, Salina, and talk to a customer service representative who can help you. All right, and you can see we've put those addresses on the screen for you there. Another viewer uh, contacts us, this one from Salina, who says, what happened to Joel Osteen on WTLW? I have noticed he is no longer on our station. No, he is not, but although he is still airing on Sunday mornings, occasionally we just make a change. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the programmers, uh, the ministers you see on 44, do not really help pay for their airtime, and they may fundraise within the show, and you know they have their own business model and so <laughs> forth. But that's not really coming to 44. It's really through your free will donations that we put most of these programmers on, and we put out a survey every year, and we try to find out what our constituency really wants to see, and then we make changes accordingly. Sun, uh, Saturday night, though, I'd really encourage you to watch yeah, Living on the Edge with Pastor Chip Ingram. Mm -hmm. Dynamic show, mm -hmm. dynamic speaker. He's really relevant in what he speaks about the family, money, all these issues that Christians experience. I have found the same thing. Every one of the shows that I've seen, I'm just almost riveted by, by the, the subject matter. It just applies to things that people are dealing with today. And it's interesting, his background, is, he's a prolific author, but his background is he was a basketball coach in high school. <laughs> In, in college, he thought he would be, not a coach, a player, he thought he'd be a coach eventually, but now he's a life coach in a sense, mm. being a pastor. Yeah, so that's Living on the Edge with Chip Ingram, Saturdays at 9 p.m. And finally, you heard all about our Spring to Life campaign. We 
shared it with you. We thanked you over and over again. We're thankful to the viewers for their support. But what's next? Right. What's next? Yeah, we always <laughs> want to say thank you. I hate to say it that way. That's not but, what I no, meant. So true. The spring campaign was so important. We had a $50,000 goal and $68,000 was raised. And that really goes towards our operating expenses. Like we were just saying, a lot of the pastors you see on 44, you know, they don't help pay for their costs. We have to pay for them mm -hmm. to be on. And that's what that, hel that helps us do. Now, going into the summer, it's always a challenge. And we had a success in the spring, but that doesn't mean people can stop giving. We really need your support in the summer. Um, I won't get into all the details, but, you know, we live by faith, week mm -hmm. by week by week. Yeah. All right. Kevin Bowers, station manager, thank you very much for the update. Nice to be here. And don't forget, we appreciate your prayers throughout the summer as well, because God can do great things through prayer. Well, we're blessed here at TV 44 to be able to air the program Update with Bill Harris. And Zach Bowers recently sat down with Bill to talk about one of his latest focused topics. Here's more from Zach. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Have you ever considered hiring a life coach? Or maybe if you're an athlete, you can think of a coach who has had an influence on your life over the years. It is clear that we all need a guide in our lives, but the question therein lies, who is that best guide? I recently sat down with Bill Harris, who recommends the Holy Spirit as the top choice of a life coach. You know, Bill, I can look back over the course of my lifetime being involved in athletics and sports and, and school sports, and I think a lot of other people could too, and they would recognize that some of the most influential people in our lives have been coaches. Yes. Be a team, oh, be yes. individual coaches. And so the topic of one of your upcoming uh, or topics of your messages is exactly that, the Holy Spirit being our life coach. Yeah. And, you know, in, in, the, in the natural and in the uh, secular world, life coaches are growing in popularity these days and people are taking them on to help them get to the next level in their life or career. And uh, I began to look at that spiritually and see that the, the Holy Spirit wants to lead us and guide us into all truth. And the resources he brings to the table are phenomenal in mm -hmm. terms of helping uh, to propel us ahead in life. Why not listen to him? Why not accept all these resources he brings our way? That's right. Well, I can t be honest, sometimes I feel like I need a life coach just to get me out of bed in the morning, <laughs> get to work. It's great to have someone there, maybe just to give us that nudge yep. and to lead us. Yep. But certainly there's a spiritual element there. Of course, the Bible, just all kinds of parallels to exactly that, to athletic, um, running the race, of course, in Hebrews and 1 Corinthians, you, you reference several of them. But it talks a lot about that, about running the race yeah. um, and just fighting the good fight and all these parallels because you know, we need that in that perspective, that coach type or that nudging that I just mentioned. Yeah, and, 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 you know, Paul did a lot of the writing on those, and the whole emphasis is on winning. And I don't mean winning in the sake of, in, in, in the regards of uh, winning it regardless of whatever or sinning in that, like, he's talking about winning in terms of the prize being to be with the Lord, hmm. to be with him in heaven, to be uh, with him on his throne and the like. And so we have to have that mentality of winning. It's a winning mentality. And that's all a coach is about. Coaches don't get up and tell, talk about defeat. They talk about that's winning. Right. That's right. <laughs> when it takes that competitive edge in life almost, we are so constantly bombarded um, trying to be knocked off the track or fall off the the path that we're supposed to be on. And it almost takes a competitive edge to fight back mm -hmm. and to say, you know what, no, I'm going to make these tougher but better decisions in our lives. I have seen coaches, uh, Zach, who are Christian and have taken a lot of the natural things of life and the metaphors in the Bible, bringing them mm -hmm. together to actually mold and shape a young kid into the man or woman that God would have them to be. And these young people grow up and they are forever indebted and, and so grateful to their coach mm -hmm. for having led them along like, like, like that. And I think that is so important about the Holy Spirit who has insight into the world that we don't have. And yet he wants to share that with us. Mm -hmm. In one point, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit does not speak of his own, but he shares with us what he hears from the Father mm -hmm. and what he hears from Jesus. And so we're getting it first hand to know day by day how to enrich our lives and how to enrich the lives of others. Yeah. So if we're looking at the Holy Spirit in that coach capacity, as you, you mentioned just a few of the roles of a coach, things like to develop you to your full potential, create the right conditions for learning, um, providing encouragement, and then one that I love, a chauffeur. <laughs> the coach <laughs> is a chauffeur often to, to the students. 
That's true. And you know, and I, what I said in my sermon about that is that we as Christians sometimes are fighting the Lord at the steering wheel of life. We want to be in control and mm -hmm. we're trying yes. to guide the steering wheel. And the Lord is saying, no, let me take the steering wheel. Let me guide you through life. And when we take that control away from the Holy Spirit and we're guiding the steering wheel now, once we have an accident, then we expect the Lord to give us a full explanation yeah, of why right. things went wrong. Uh -huh. And clean it up for us. Too, <laughs> exactly. Right? Without a doubt. Well, you, you mentioned also kind of the few ways the Holy Spirit does that. There's kind of distinct ways that he guides us. And let's run through a couple of those. Well, you know, one of the ways he guides us is through the inner witness. And I think that as Christians, we need to encourage one another to spend more quiet time. Mm. When we have questions before the Lord, sometimes we get a deep settled peace to know that, yes, this is the way I want you to go. There's a peace about it. Or sometimes, Zach, we get a, a disturbance in our spirit mm. and we feel a resistance and the Holy Spirit is saying, uh-uh, don't go there, don't go there. Right. You know? <laughs> and we need to listen to that because it is so easy to override that. And then we wind up in trouble on the other end. Sure. Yeah. And you also, you talk about um, showing you things to come and that yeah. that is maybe outward. We, we spend a lot of time focusing on our current actions or things we've done, maybe not as much time looking towards what's coming. Exactly, because there is a future and why not turn to a man who knows the future and can tell you what steps you ought to be taking now to get there. Just a reminder that you can hear more about this topic starting Sunday here on TV 44. Of course, you can watch Update with Bill Harris every Sunday at 1.30 and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Well, now on to this week's health segment. Stuffy noses, they come and they go, but with this year's allergy season, many of us have suffered prolonged bouts with the Kleenex box. Dancy is with Dr. Trudy Peeper, who has a very interesting solution, which normally you might think would make you sneeze. Well, we're going to talk um, about one specific issue right now, and, I, and it's something that many of us are dealing with, with allergies or just having what we call a summer cold, yes. um, and that's the runny nose, and it seems like it doesn't stop <laughs> sometimes. Um, you have an idea, something that many of us may have <laughs> never thought of um, to help our runny noses. It is, you know, God gave us all kinds of plants and he talks about giving the, the seeds for a food and the leaves for a medicine. But in this case, peppercorns will help you with dry up your sinuses and your nose. It's a long time folk medicine, which is kind of a fun thing. But uh, a lot of times when you have a lot of allergy uh, sensations and it's stimulating your mast cells, then they're secreting the catarrh, which is phlegm. And it comes from the mucus linings in the nose, the larynx, the lungs, uh, and it, it creates this uh, mucus. One easy way is to take peppercorns, one at a time. They're very small, but just take them, and you slowly put them in your mouth, and you just chew them very gently. And then once they're done, you take a small sip of warm water. It takes about five or six, and it'll completely clear up your nose from that time. Um, other things that you can do besides the peppercorns, uh, if that doesn't, because they, they have a little earthy taste to them, mm -hmm. a little sting, but um, would be take some teas. Things that are in your kitchen, sage, um, some lemon uh, honey juice also will help with that also. You know, another thing with as far as the mucus and this allergy season that people tend to forget about, but if you are dehydrated, your allergies are worse. So if you can keep your body hydrated, the fluids in your mucus uh, need to be um, active because if it doesn't, the pollen comes in and it sticks to them and that's what irritates them. So if you're, if you're dehydrated, your, your mucuses are dry, the pollen comes in, it irritates them. So if you keep them moist, it slides off and you have less irritation. And so, you know, when um, your mother has told you since you were young to be drinking when you have colds, um, it, it seems counterproductive. It seems like you're putting more fluids in your body to come right back out, but it does. It, it, that's what, um, it helps you eliminate the bad bacteria or bad viruses, correct? Correct, and that's what your body's trying to do when mm -hmm. it has a reaction like that. And in some instances, if you find that if you're taking um, uh, lots of different things, your, your body is, has the, the hydration, you've tried the peppercorns and you still have mucus, it may be a sign that your body is over toxic, that you have, mm. have, have taken in too many um, carbohydrates, sugar, yeah. and that has congested your body. And now your body is, is working really hard to try to get that out of its system. And so you may want to cut back on sugars and see if you can, if that would help uh, the mucus also. Okay. 
Well, Dr. Trudy Pieper is going to be back with us in um, some shows to come, so we will let her go for today, and uh, we'll be back to talk with her in a little bit. And back to you. Peppercorns and runny noses. I would never have guessed. I would think a peppercorn would Little make you known sneeze. fact, that's actually the fourth verse of my favorite things, peppercorns and runny noses. <laughs> That sounds like a song in the making, actually. Exactly. It's a little known verse. I wish I would have had the peppercorn or known about the peppercorn two weeks, four weeks, a month ago because <laughs> I, I had a runny nose for months now and I didn't know that. I actually did some research on peppercorn. I want to let these guys <laughs> Please know. Please do. Because I, I had to know more about it. It is actually a berry. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's a berry that's dried into pepper. So you can get effect. juice. You could have peppercorn juice then. I'm sure you could try. It's neither pepper nor a corn. It's neither, no. It's, I like peppercorn ranch, but I don't know if that helps with running noses. I don't know, but it sounds good. Salad, anyone? <laughs> well, this is something special that happens only about once a year. We're not talking about peppercorn anymore. We're talking about <laughs> new pavers to the TV44, adding new pavers to the Walk of Honor. And now is the time we are planning to do just that. Walk of Honor is located right outside our main entrance door, designed first as a way to honor God for his faithfulness to our situation, and secondly, as a way to honor those we love. And you know there's a nice bench right next to that walk of honor. You could bring your salad with your peppercorn ranch dressing <laughs> on that and then you could enjoy the walk of honor and view your paver and all the other ones. To find out more about this permanent lasting opportunity, just give us a call at TV44 for a gift of $500. Your favorite Bible verse, loved one's name, or special quote of remembrance can be part of the forever family here at TV44. And if you've not had a chance to see this special entrance, like we said, bring your lunch Come by in person. Our regular business hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. Well, it's time now to pray for some of your prayer requests from this past week. You know, one couple asked us to pray for their daughter who is having twins, praying for healthy babies at full term. Another friend requested prayer for her eyes healing from macular degeneration. Prayer request also came in this week for someone's daughter asking that she be made whole in mind, body, and spirit. And we received a praise from a viewer who's thankful every time she sees a young person give his or her testimony here on TV 44 and sports ministries. Yes, we certainly love seeing how God is working amongst the youth. So let's take a moment and pray for some of these concerns. And Father, we do lift up our viewers that need you. They need healing. They need help. They pray for family members. Just so many needs and wants throughout the community, Lord, that we just lift them before you and know that you hear them and you answer them. We thank you that we can trust you with these prayers and with these requests. And we thank you for lives that are being changed here in West Central Ohio. In Jesus' name, amen. Of course, you can share your prayer requests with us anytime. Email us at prayer at WTLW.com or call our prayer line 419-439-3000. And sometimes people ask, they get a, a message sometimes. We only have staffed prayer volunteers certain times. But if you do get that message, please leave it. It actually comes to us. We have a chance to hear it and we do keep praying for you as well. Other ways to stay in touch with us, find us on Twitter, Mark Kuntz 44, Andy Lynch 44, Jen Beck 44, Matt Fingle 44, or Bowers Z, no 44. You gotta get a 44, Zach. <laughs> if the 44 will help me get one more Twitter follower, I will. I understand the 44 is even cooler than the blue check mark. Really? Oh. We are setting a trend. Mm. The fact, trendsetters. In fact, Matt Finkel denied the blue check mark, said he didn't want it, he wants the 44. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> You can also follow Andy and Jennifer on Facebook. And for some extra encouragement, go to our website, WTLW.com. You can click on Andy's Points of Life devotional, a new post every week. You can also check out Jennifer's One Minute of Inspiration. And remember, you can re-watch Classic Edition of Faith and Friends and past shows by visiting the website as well, WTLW.com. Classic Edition. Classic. And we like we right classic. in there with Andy Griffith's show. Just like this the antique classic. right here. Yeah. Antique does. Hey, I heard there's something inside of it. There is. Wait, we have to do a big reveal. We've oh. all been wondering what is making noise inside this 55-year-old, that doesn't seem that old, but I think desk. it's crayons. Mark says crayons. Andy, would you Gold like to do the We could course. just sell it at the auction. That's a great auction it idea. off without anybody knowing what's in there. There could be doubloons. Doubloons is actually the, there's no M, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh, it's colored oh. pegs. You can't see them at home, but we will. We can turn the desk ahead, around Jack. here. <laughs> You're Colored pegs, white. does this even make it yeah. more valuable for the auction? Well, because there's right. a pegboard there at the bottom wow. and you can create your own designs using those pegs. We could spell your name out mm. here. See hours here. and hours of intellectual fun All for kinds the of things. young loved one in your life. The possibilities are endless. September 6th, it could be yours.
Finally, today we leave you with our scripture from the day. One more time, remember we're talking about hearing, Matthew 13, 12 through 15. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts, and churn, so that I should heal them. I want to encourage you to take a little bit of time to delve into that scripture. A lot of lests there. Lest, lest, lest do this, lest do that. But God has some important things mm. that he wants us to, to hear. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to take some quiet time and read in order to hear that. Well, thank you for joining us here on Faith and Friends. For Mark Koontz, Zach Bowers, Andy Lynch, myself. Cheyenne the Wonder Horse. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us, everyone. <laughs> have a wonderful week.